have a sit down, relax, this is going to be fun. Um, so, Evans coolant, and I'll put this up on the big on the screen so you can see it better. Um, we're going to have a quick run through this because this is their uh, bollock sheet, and then we're going to actually look at some of the science and all the rest of it. I've got some more data sheets here. This took me fucking ages to try and find this kind of rubbish. Um, that's why this video, people ask for it months and months ago, and it's taken some time to get around to doing it. Um, so let's talk about uh, Evans waterless coolant. So if we look at this bullshit on here, so this is for the classic cool 180 degrees, um, so they have different varieties, heavy duty diesels, uh, classic, racing, performance bullshit, all the kind of usual stuff. So it says uh, it's used for classic cars, um, for use of classic cars primarily fabricated from cast iron with uh, carbon steel, copper and aluminium components. Um, there's a good reason for that, and we'll get to that in a minute. But basically what it is, is if you've got cast iron blocks and all the rest of it, they'll rust quite readily in water, which is one of the main reasons why you want waterless coolants. And basically what they add is they add loads of inhibitors, uh, sodium nitride, stuff like that. That basically these are just anti-corrosive agents. They're also trying to get rid of the uh, electrolyte properties of water. That's why they don't want water in there. But it says, low viscosity synthetic liquid boils above 180, uh, freezes below minus 40, it's green in colour, almost odourless, and it's a slightly sweet, non-toxic, but not recommended for human consumption. <laughs> uh, waterless coolant has been proven to last 20 years and a million miles in service without the need for replacement. So this is the important bit. Uh, we'll go into that in a bit later. It goes on about the standards that it passes. It says you can get it in 2, 5, 25, 2 or 5 or 1,000 litre containers. Holy shit. Uh, health and safety, non-toxic, biodegradable, uh, not classified as flammable and not classified as a hazardous for transportation. Hopefully not because it's going to sit in your engine. Although weirdly enough petrol isn't there in every single vehicle that are transported around everywhere. Uh, the benefits of water-based coolant, it eliminates overheating. Right, whoa, 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 straight away there's bullshit. It doesn't eliminate overheating. If your cooling system breaks, then you are going to overheat. It's a bit of a bold statement. Evans waterless coolant has a boiling point of above 180, it's actually 204, uh, and will not vaporise, thus eliminating, well if you fucking heat it up enough, <laughs> uh, thus eliminating overheating boil over and, and after boil. Uh, reduces pressure, Evans coolant generates very low vapour pressures, reducing, well it says it, re it produces very low vapour pressures, and just said it doesn't vaporise. Make your fucking mind up. This is on the same page. Uh, what uh, blah, 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 reduces strains on your engine hoses, com co uh, com cooling components, and so on. Uh, prevents corrosion. Water promotes corrosion via oxidation electrolysis. I don't say water promotes it. it. Makes it sound like it's going out of its way to do it on purpose. Evans Waters cont contains no oxygen, and there are virtually no um, virtually non-conductive effectively preventing corrosion. We've got to be very careful what you say there. Effectively, which isn't completely. So, you know, there are, there's some acid formation, we'll go through that in a bit, but there's other things that um, this stuff actually does, which is, in a sense, you could almost say is nearly as bad as just running water. Maximises brake horsepower. Now, this is just fucking hilarious. Because, number one is the put brake horsepower. So it'll only maximise your horsepower when you're on a dyno, on the road it obviously won't. You know, know your terminology. You've got to remember that they've only got to print one of these sheets and this is for the rest of the world to see. You might say, ah oh, man, that's nitpicking, but get it fucking right. You're meant to be the experts telling us that this is meant to be right. Uh, Evans waterless coolants eliminate pre-ignition and detonation caused by overheating. Whoa, whoa, fucking hell, steady on there, sunshine. It eliminates pre-ignition and detonation. So, pre-ignition and detonation can be caused by fucking all sorts. I've done the videos on them, go and check them out. Um, but all sorts. Compression ratios, uh, too much boost from your turbo. Could be all sorts of reasons. Carbon deposits, a run old knackered engine, shitty fuel, God knows what. It can be caused by a load of things. It does say pre-ignition and detonation caused by overheating. Again, that's bollocks, because if you have a too high a compression ratio, then that's not over. It, it, it's it's such a broad, weird statement. Is that to make? I don't like it. It's just yeah. It's just bullshit. 
uh, thus increasing combustion efficiency and delivering more power. How? Your coolant is not going to change how much power that engine is making because that engine is making what that engine makes. The coolant, uh, coolant's ability, which we'll go into later, which is actually worse, is not going to increase horsepower, you fucking muppets. It freezes below 40 degrees. So does 50-50 mix. You know what I mean? I don't understand what your problem is here. Non-toxic has been proven to be non-toxic. Standard antifreeze is toxic and known and is known to kill pets. They've got to be them dickheads. And then it has recommended by Wheeler Dealer Ed China. Ed, you're a fucking dickhead, mate. On the back of this, it goes on about all this shit. And it tells you how to fill it. It also tells you that you have to buy another bottle of fucking stuff to get all the water out of your engine. Um, which is just fucking, just trying to rope you in even more. This shit is expensive. We'll go into that in a later video. Um, when we do some testing. Um, I'm going to actually, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a cylinder. I'm going to cut away the cylinder so we can have a piece of glass in there. We're going to heat up the engine. We'll do it on the Honda. And we'll actually see what happens in the engine. Uh, water versus their coolant and we'll see what happens uh, with water then a 50 50 mix and then their coolant and see if what we're about to fucking hear them jamming on about is actually true or not so when you go fishing around on the old internet i found this which is a data sheet now this confused the fuck out of me no end because well for lack of a better word it doesn't make any sense so i got two one from back in the day so this one's from back in the day. When's this one from? So this is a material. This is an MSDS sheet. This is from 2003. So it says it contains 66 to 70 percent ethylene glycol. So we've seen ethylene glycol in the previous video. If you've watched that, if you haven't, stop me a dick. So this is the old one, and this used to contain ethylene glycol. and it contains uh, propylene, gly propylene glycol propylene glycol don't know why I had to say that twice um, and it says it contains 66 to 70 percent now they have to be sketchy because these are proprietary blends you know this can be patented stuff and all the rest of it um, and it also says and I shit you not this says Evans coolant systems right and it doesn't say it says there we go it says from 2003, I'll put this up on the screen if I can, it says uh, MPG, whatever that is, it's their product, MPG Plus, it's coolant, glycons, and it's a blend formula, and it has ethylene glycol in it, equal to or no more than 70, 69%, that's what it says here, um, and it goes on to say, so this is from 2003, this is what they were manufacturing in 2003, tells you the boiling point, it's uh, specific heat in BTUs, it tells you all this shit. But in the ingredients, on the back page, uh, flammability, blah 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 blah. On the back page it says it's that, it says it's probably in glycol, which it won't tell you what it is. And then it says it's got water in it. And then it says it's got some proprietary corrosion inhibitors. So, um, we'll put inhibitor package. It's a package, that's what it says on here. Package is 2% or less. Less than 2%. Um, so it's got water in it. Obviously, it hasn't got that much propylene glycol in it. It hasn't got that much water in it because we've got fucking 70% sat here. Um, so Evans were making water uh, coolants that were meant to just be basically better than everyone else's that had water in it, had propylene, ethylene, and the uh, inhibitors and all the rest of it. So, um, then I come to a 2014, now this is what baffled me a bit, because this is the 2014 date, safety data sheet, I couldn't find a more recent one, and in here it says, Evans High Performance Water Waterless Engine Coolant, which isn't that 180 sheet, we had that sheet on a second ago, and when you go through this, it says it's harmful if swallowed and it's toxic. And then when you actually get to the ingredients, it says it's got ethylene glycol in it. Now, it says between 80 and 85%. Well, 
right so this is toxic and then it's got um, sodium nitrate in and which will be inhibitors less than one percent and it's got a couple of little weird acids in they're all lower than one percent and all the rest of it so this says we've got rid of the water we've got rid of the water I imagine we're keeping these and I imagine the rest is made out of that um, because the sodium nitrate makes up less than one percent so it's probably looking the same but this is Evans waterless engine coolant there's no water in it they've got that bit right but this is toxic so this is the performance one this isn't the same one they were talking about before hey fella you're right. Hello. so this isn't the same one they were talking about before um, this is the high performance one and I imagine that the high performance one still is poisonous and it will kill you but it is toxic you know, ethylene glycol isn't the most toxic thing on earth it's just not very fucking good for you so if we look at all that we know that up until 2004 they were making the performance one which still had this ethylene glycol in now when you try and find out what's in um, their waterless coolant, the one they were talking about, the one that, that page I just showed you, this one, this classic, the one that's all over the website, this one here, it bangs on saying about its toxicity and that it is, uh, what's it say, slightly sweet, non-toxic but rec not recommended for human consumption, and at the bottom it says it's non-toxic, Evans Water and Cool Coolant has been proven to be non-toxic, standard antifreeze is toxic and is known to kill pets. Right, so the EU and a lot of people in the world are stepping away from ethylene glycol because it's toxic and propylene glycol pretty much does exactly the same thing. Um, Evans water coolant, the one they are selling now, the non-toxic one, is basically propylene glycol. They're telling you not to drink it for the simple fact it has some rust inhibitors and stabilisers inside. And as you can see, propylene glycol, which is what's in this, this liquid shit in here, isn't toxic. I haven't fucking died yet, and millions of people are using these fucking stupid things. I haven't died yet either. So now we've covered what it is. So the new Evans coolant, the one off the website, the one that's got all this bollocks we're about to read, is propylene glycol. And the problem with propylene uh, propylene glycol is it has a specific heat of one point. Was it one point six two eight? And that's joules. Uh, per gram per Kelvin and water has 4.4 so water has a specific heat that is a hell of a lot higher than your propylene glycol so as a coolant water is far superior to um, propylene glycol it is as simple as that water is so much better that adding propylene glycol is uh, having a hundred percent propylene glycol means that it is not cooling your engine down nowhere near not even half as good as water did so just pray to god that your coolant system is been over engineered to be basically handle the uh, excess um, heat that basically is going to be your engine is going to run hotter how hotter um, you know you're just gonna have to do a test and see you know, you can, if you want to switch this coolant shit, go for it. I wouldn't fucking bother. But anyway, now we've got the questions and answers thing, because that's all there is. Now, they have not said in their blurb all the way through their website what this propylene glycol shit is. But they do have a page. How it works and physical limitations. So we'll start... Is that the place to start? General questions? Yes. So we'll start with this, how it works, and all this bullshit. And then we'll move on to the general questions and answers. So, how it works. Water is an excellent fluid for cooling whilst it's in its liquid state. Yes, it is. I can almost smell what's coming. But when water turns to steam, it has virtually no capacity for heat transfer. Right, you've got to get your idea about what you're talking about, thermal conductivity and heat transfer. What they're talking about is specific heat input, um, because you can tell when it goes further on. But what we've got for steam, for steam it's 2.8. That's for steam. So, 
<coughs> Virtually none. If steam was so, so shit, this is why they used them for steam engines. Because, obviously, Evans Coolant could have come along and said, don't use steam, dickhead. Use our um, fucking propylene glycol stuff. It's even better. Not that they knew that at the time. But anyway, um, it has no capacity for transferring heat. It has actually got something to do with density. Obviously, a gas is a gas, so it's not very good at conducting heat. But that's not what they're talking about. Evans is a superior fluid for transferring heat in engines because it mains, remains in a liquid state above 180 degrees. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that most engines are designed with using a 50-50 a mix in mind, then having a coolant that goes up to 150 degree, 80 degrees. The only thing that this uh, propylene glycol is going to do is, if your engine does have a problem and does start to catastrophe, you know, there's a thermal runaway for some reason, and your engine does start to overheat, it is going to have a less detrimental effect on your engine um, if you use this Evans coolant. However, because it's got a sheet, uh, shit um, specific heat capacity, it's more likely that you're going to get there with Evans coolant. This article details the benefits of a significant higher, higher boiling point. Within an engine's coolant system, the hottest surface are those adjacent to the combustion chamber, specifically the cylinder liner and the cylinder head. More specifically, the cylinder head. Um, in those hot spots, water is likely to vaporise, preventing efficient cooling and causing loss of performance and unnecessary engine damage, apart from the fact that it's under pressure, you fucking clowns. And obviously when the water starts to rise in temperature, the pressure increases. It's, it's not a self-regulating thing, but it's almost. Uh, what else does it say? Um, when, a coolant, when the coolant fails in this way, the water becomes even hotter, causing more hot spots and more steam. But how does this coolant system fail? Usually you blow a hose, you blow a pipe, you blow a seam, you blow a gasket or something like that. That's what caused the problem. This has nothing to do with water. This was down to something failing. Now you could say it's uh, because you're using a high pressure system. I say high pressure. Because you're using a pressurised system, this may have put a strain on the coolant system. But if you keep it in good nick and check it now and then and chew that fucking crow, then, um, you know, generally, that actually worked. Then generally, it usually, you know, it sorts, it, if you look after your system, it usually is okay. Uh, what else does it say? Evans, what, uh, Evans, we'll just say waterless coolant, or Evans. Evans will not boil around your engine hotspots maintaining, that's a bit of a, a, a bold statement, maintaining efficient cooling performance even when the engine is put under extreme conditions. When water turns to steam, it pressurises the cooling system, putting strain on hoses and other components. What? When water turns to steam, it pressurises the cooling system. No, when water heats up, it pressurises the cooling system. If there's a void, it will evaporate into it, which is called steam. But there's already the pressure already there, you fucking dickheads. The pressure doesn't magically appear because something turns to steam. Fuck, you know. Right. Uh, the significant boiling part of Evans coolant means it's 70% less pressure than water, resulting in a less stressed cooling system. 75% we're going to test that we are literally going to test that I'm going to run Evelyn's coolant in an engine and uh, we won't do it with the Honda because that's air cooled you dickhead um, we'll do it with like the uh, the AM6 or something like that but we will test that and see if the pressure is 75% lower which I fucking very much doubt it is water contains oxygen which causes corrosion and also uh, allows electro electrolyte <laughs> Electrolytic activity which further damages the engine's metal. Evans waterless coolant eliminates corrosion and blah 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 blah. Apart, right, with, Evans is doing something stupid here. What they're doing is they're comparing pure HTO versus your uh, versus the Evans stuff. But not many people run pure HTO at all. Your if you go down you go down to your local hardware store now, get a bottle of environmentally friendly or whatever coolant and it'll have it'll say basically oh it's 50 50 it's 50 percent water 50 percent propylene glycol and it has rust inhibitors in it and all the rest of it they add a color to it they add fucking all sorts to it smell the roses so it says physical limitations of water since the 1930s engine coolants have been based on a mixture of ethylene glycol water and corrosion inhibitors see they'll fucking admit it themselves um, all such mixtures have inherent, inherent physically and chemical limitations that restrict engine performance and, engine, and affect reliability. 
A fucking dawn. Evans Waterless Coolant represents a major step forward in engine cooling and en engine protection technology. Does it? Does it really? I don't think so. Uh, within an engine cooling system, the hottest surface is the blah, blah, we've read all that fucking rubbish. Oh, then it starts going on about fucking insufficient critical heat flux and nucleation boiling point and all this fucking rubbish that it bangs on about. Um, which is simply just fucking boring because it has little to do. They're going about vaporization pressures and all the rest of it. This is a pure water, not a glycol mix, and so on and so forth. And they don't have to just bang on forever. So we'll skip all that rubbish because that's just, it literally is. I know you might, I know you might be thinking, oh, Matt, but that's maybe where the science is. It's not. Well, it, 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 I've read through it, it's not. It's fucking rubbish. We'll read through this bit, this is the best bit. Go and read through it yourself if you don't believe me. Um, the big question is, what's the problem with water and why should I convert to Evans? This is a key question which requires a multifaceted answer. When you are bullshitting, that's exactly... I'm sure Motorman said something very similar to this. Um, but well worth reading if you have ten minutes to spare. Here we go. Water, great for drinking, not ideal for engine cooling. First used in engines some hundred years ago. Well, change your mind from 1930 to 100 years ago. Water-based coolants are universally acknowledged. Are you see? <laughs> there we go. There's the first thing. There's the first thing. Right? Is Well, no, we'll start right from the beginning. Water, great for drinking, but not ideal for engine cooling. What the fuck has if I can drink it got anything to do with it? They're trying to sell you propylene glycol. Also, not brilliant for drinking. But, uh, you know what I mean? It's just like, well, what a stupid fucking comparison. Lava, not good for fucking, you know, not good for drinking. You know, <laughs> what the fuck has that got to do with anything? Fuck's sake. So, first used in engines, blah, 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 blah. And it says, water-based coolants are universally acknowledged to have inherent physical and chemical limitations that affect long-term reliability, increasing maintenance costs and often restricting engine performance. What the fuck are you talking about? Restricting engine performance. They're just making this shit up. How is changing your liquid in your coolant, unless it's mercury or something because it's fucking heavy, would this make any difference? On, it's just fucking rubbish. So I think they're talking about how high you can push the engine in, in temperature-wise. But that's all to do with the thermodynamics of the engine that are designed into the engine when they design it in the fucking factory. Not when you're fucking dicking around on your driveway. Statistics published by manufacturers and motoring organisations confirm that water, this is brilliant, that water is the root cause of 60% of engine breakdowns and 40% of catastrophic failures. Where the fuck have, I'm trying to look for this, where the fuck have they got that from? Water is the root cause of 60% of engine failures. Right. Not bearings letting go, not wear, not heat, not anything. You know, not fucking misuse, not fucking, uh, you know what I mean, Over, overdriving the engine, nothing like that. What about air-cooled engines? Any road. Or oil-cooled engines. The Suzuki Bandit. The Suzuki Bandit, um, the 600s and the 1200s, before they went to 650 and 1250 water-cooled, they were all oil-cooled. They failed. Maybe that's what make up the 40% that aren't the failures. Who fucking knows? While internal damage goes mo mostly unnoticed in new engines, it goes unnoticed until it breaks, the cu c cumulative effect of corrosion, cavitation, and cyclic pressurisation becoming increasingly apparent over time. It's also called wear shed. For decades, engine designers and antifreeze anti formulators, <laughs> which use this stuff, have persisted with water while in endeavouring to overcome its in intrinsic, so intrinsic shortcomings. You know, they're just trying to fucking mash you with words here, make it sound all technical. There's a reason why we use water. It's because it's, it is literally the second best um, 
specific, it has a second highest specific heat capacity. What fucking, and they, they know this, this is the thing, this is just like I say, it's just marketing wank. Prim primarily because there has been no viable alternatives. They've been using propylene glycol in, um, in your coolant as an antifreeze for fucking ages. Jack Evans, a coolant system designer who struggled for many years with water's, water's limitations. Oh, he struggled. He kept on drinking it because it kept him alive, but he struggled. Uh, was determined to find a better solution. Finally, in 1993, Jack formulated a synthetic coolant which eliminated corrosion. Erosion? You know, like cliffs and stuff when they erode. <laughs> Erosion, corrosion, overheating, significantly reducing system pressures and maintaining and maintained heat transfer equilibrium. Well, he fucking didn't, because like I say, well, over the last 20 years, Evans Waterless Coolant has been tested and proven by OEMs, uh, fleet operators, racing teams, professional restorers, plant operators, all <laughs> automotive aficionados, I think he's talking about um, fucking Jay Leno, and like you'd ever trust that guy with anything, to increase reliability and reduce operating costs. The higher boiling point of Evans Coolant has also facilitating facilitating improving in improvements in engine design performance and fuel economy. God, they are fucking saving the world. Well, that was fucking worth it, wasn't it? They are literally, maybe he fucking, he was shocked as well. They are literally saving the world. You know how you fucking save two strokes? Stop with fucking all this E-Tech fucking direct injection. Stop with transfer port injection. Just fill it with some Evans and you'll be fucking laughing. Booyah, done.